Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I made a bit of a mess over here, it's not something I like to do, but it's with a good cause because I've built something. Making this video has been a bit of a struggle, I am a few days later, but as I mentioned in the Q&A video, I got some awesome projects coming and I need to build a whole lot of stuff. And the first things I got were these aquariums. But before I could fit those aquariums, I needed to build a rack. If you want a full tutorial on how to build these racks, then click the link in the top right corner. I've already made one like this and I go more into depth in that video, but just some quick pointers. Always pre-drilled wood you're going to use because that way you prevent any splitting and your setup stays a whole lot stronger. I always start with the shelves, you can also start differently but I always start with the shelves. Once the shelves are done it's pretty simple, attach them to the stands and then use the spacers and that way you make sure that the distance between all the shelves is exactly the same. And this is where we ended, so the rack is almost done, at least the basis is done, as you can see I still need to t put the top on there, add some additional light and uh, make sure all the electrics is uh, wired properly, it's, just, it's still loose because I'm testing. Uh, in this rack I actually have everything on three timers, one for the heat, one for the light, one for the UV, but on here I will have timers per row and this row will, will actually extend that one will leave to another part of the room I think next week um, so there will be a row over here a row over here here and here so I can have a little bit of difference depending on the species I keep in there um, yeah yeah it's basically this pretty much the same build as here as you can see these shells um, are in comparison to the previous rack I've built not hanging on screws on the side but actually they are uh, screwed into one main beam that's running all the way from the top to the bottom and then the shells are resting on spacers that are again attached to the sides you can also see it how i built that with this rack it looks like this so you can see this one has been in the room a little bit longer this wood is new but it will change color pretty fast um, so what this does is actually that, that not the shelf is not just resting on some screws but it's actually attached from here and here so it's hanging on that main beam but these support the shelf also so a lot of that weight is driven into the spacers and then all the way into here into the ground and that makes it a whole lot sturdier and a lot more safer to have the weights I'm gonna be putting in here because in here each shelf will rest at least these four will rest about 250 kilos each look someone is actually active another difference with this rack compared to this rack as you can see there are spaces for one two three setups I finally found use for these by the way these are I'm gonna use for shiny source anyway um, and that's partly also because the higher setups, but also because there is still a lot of space between the ground and the first setup. I did that with the reason, and that reason is not needed anymore, so I thought, well, maybe we make better use of the space. I'm also getting some terrestrial turtles and tortoises added. So this one is flush with the ground, and on top of there will be one, two, three, four terrariums. 
similar to the one I've built here behind the clutter. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's going to look pretty well. I don't like the dark color, but in here it doesn't look too bad. And I think if I have these setups over here on this level framed by this lighter color of wood, it will look kind of okay. So those will be over here and here will be all the aquariums. Now let's talk about the aquariums I just got because I made some things different to what I usually do and that's something I wanted to share in this video. So let's talk about these aquariums. Uh, I had these built uh, by a local builder that does a lot of the stuff for me um, with the idea that I want to test something out and if it works I will also use it for the Sakalia and other species but for now I'm going to try these with some new turtles I've got. Now uh, the base is pretty much the same. It's a 6mm glass setup. There's black plastic covering all the sides so the animals can see true to each other and it also gives them a bit more of a secure feeling and it just looks better in my opinion so that's pretty much all the same as what I usually do there's 20 centimeters of space between here so I have easy access to the setups I thought about making the space a little bit smaller for space you know so I want to add bigger setups or whatever uh, but I don't want to do that I think 20 centimeters is absolute minimum because of the basking spots, UV light and also uh, me getting in there and also with heat uh, getting out and plenty of ventilation. So that's why I stay with 20 centimeters and I will keep at least 20 centimeters of space in all my racks between the aquarium and the uh, yeah, top shelf, let's say. The aquariums are 60 centimeters deep, 40 centimeters wide and 30 centimeters high. As you can see, I've lined the rack with these air tubings. These I still have hanging around. I might replace them, but they will get dirty anyway. Anyway, I've lined the racks with these air tubings because everything in this room will run on air eventually. So this is the start of that. As you can see, um, it runs all the way through here and then to an air stone. Now there will be a filter on there, of course. This was just for testing. These smaller setups will have separate sponge filters, but the bigger ones, the bigger new ones, will actually have matte filtration with air. I will show you how that works. Everything is controlled with a valve per setup. And I definitely can recommend these metal ones in comparison to the plastic ones. These metal ones are way more accurate and they also pass through a whole lot more air compared to the plastic ones, so your output uh, is way higher so that's great and it's yeah it looks a lot better I think now as you might have noticed these are quite far to the front and that's because I want to have easy access to the filtration and also because I wanted to have the egg laying areas of these all the way in the back because that's the most stress free zone um, I can still reach it easily uh, with these height and uh, with this depth of this aquarium if we're going to use deeper aquariums for some bigger turtles, then I need to uh, have another solution. But this works for this size. But yeah, the egg laying area is all the way over there. And I wanted to have easy access to the filter. And just see how this works. This is really something uh, I'm just trying out new stuff on here that I don't usually do. Just to see how it all works. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff different over here. To give the animals easy access to the land area, I have these trays and uh, yeah, these are very cheap and they work great. You can easily uh, get these up to size. I am sure there are better ways to cut this stuff, but this way it's a whole lot of fun. You just gotta clean up the mess. Uh, do make sure you clean up the side so there are no sharp edges because uh, although turtles are stronger than human fingers, still you don't want them to get damaged. I believe this stuff is called light diffuser, but if you can find it in the Netherlands, I actually find it at your local aquarium store because these are often used to cultivate corals uh, on. Now these ramps I have from the back all the way to the front because these animals are not the best climbers or at least I don't know I think so but for Sakalia I will actually have them 
way more up high like that because those live in hill uh yeah hill habitats hill stream type situations and they are very good climbers the same as platysternon so those are will actually give a, a much steeper ramp so they have to really like they would in nature uh, climb up a hill sometimes when they want to bask or get out the water anyway that's it for the ramps the basking spots are on these ramps i will have a slate plate over here there's one also a bit more above the land area but i will try to have them above the stairs so they can easily slide into the water if they want to and then also it heats up the water a little bit more okay so let's talk about the proverbial elephant in the room these land areas uh, as you can see these land areas are running all the way to the top of the aquarium and it's nothing something you usually will see because well if you don't have these then the animals will simply walk out of the setup so the reason i have these land areas all the way up to the top is because again i'm just trying some stuff out uh, i have turtles from hill stream uh, type habitats and those are used to having their laying area yeah above the uh, water line and also it doesn't seem very logical to have turtles lay their eggs underneath uh, the water level as they will do in a setup like this or in a setup like this you know the water line is over here and then you have this part and then there are the eggs now there are people preventing this by uh, having plastic containers in their setups and they put on these bricks or these PVC um, it, yeah, uh, structures and then have this plastic box with the laying area on top of there but I absolutely hate the look of that I, I just don't like it and also with cleaning I, I really don't like how it looks so yeah I don't want to do that uh, but I still want to make sure that the animals can lay their eggs above the water level now uh, the other option was what a lot of people do and works pretty well uh, to be to be fair is that they just simply have the land area and then have the glass walls running like 20 centimeters higher and I could have done the same you know maybe not the front one but then have the back one and the sides have them just the glass running up and I will cover them with the black paper and it would look great but the problem with that is that I still need then space above that glass panel for for instance my t5 because i run a t5 across several setups instead of one uh, it's, it's it's a bit more uh, cost efficient with the energy and also with buying new bulbs and also this way i just make better use of the space but i can't really cut into glass to make space for that tubing or to make space for these piping or to make space for attaching for instance these because these will be attached to the sides um, i can't really do that with glass so that's when i thought about these polycarbonate plates so these polycarbonate plates are actually replacing the glass wall that you would have uh, up higher normally now they they are semi-transparent they will discolor a bit over the years but the animals can't really see each other at least not identify each other uh, i think so um, i think it looks a whole lot better compared to the other rack where you can just see into the sides like you can see over there i've tried it with that one it looks better but you can see um, so it also looks a whole lot better but these polycarbonate plates enable me to have the egg laying area or the resting area as high as possible without having to use um, yeah some some higher glass panels or some ugly plastic box but also to make cuts so I can have my T5 run through there I can have these run through there etc and I think it just overall it looks good it's very simple very easy to uh, cut and uh, yeah this enables me to have the setups the way that I want I'm not sure if this is gonna work I'm just gonna run this all through the winter and then after hibernation if it works I'm gonna use similar setups just a bit bigger for my Sakalia because those are also turtles that need to be kept separate and yeah just see how this works and this is something I really wanted to show you uh, this is what I've been doing different you know the filtration up the way up to the front the resting area all the way in the back most stress-free and uh, yeah, using these polycarbonate plates to enable me to have the land area as high as possible without having animals walk out of there and without having to uh, yeah use even more space above the setups for these uh, t5 setups in the lighting etc again I would say 20 centimeters is the absolute minimum um, these T5s are not directly above 
the land area because that way the animals can uh, bask under the UV a little bit lower or higher depending on their needs and also it lights a bit of the water area now I will have additional LED lighting I'm just doubting between one long bar um, which will be pretty intense or just have a 13 watt compact lamp above each setup um, yeah thinking about the animals that I'm gonna keep in here but that's yeah that's about what I'm gonna do so uh, yeah let me know what you think do you think this will work and uh, how do you like the ID and uh, maybe you have additional IDs or this is something you can use yourself let me know uh, the animals that are gonna be living in here are gonna be one Malayamis per setup the snail eating turtles absolutely amazing turtles I've fallen completely in love with them so so cool to have those over uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just leave these be for a day then clean them out completely because these are new aquariums with new silicone etc so I just want to make sure they are clean and drained and then I will put the heaters in there because my Amy's likes it warm and there's not really anything in here yet to heat up more and then we are gonna put in the Malayamis but that's for the next video so if you want to see those make sure uh, yeah to stick around and for now just let me know what you think of this ID do you think it will work it at least looks kind of cool I think of course there will be sand and plants and uh, you know a land area back there uh, but I think the base looks kind of cool with the old black and the uh, yeah the polycarbonate doesn't look too bad so let's hope it works thanks so much for watching and uh, yeah goodbye